Good morning, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Maxwell, and I serve on the welcome team and the care team. And we've got two Bible readings this morning. The first one is Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 16. If you need a Bible, we do have some at the back there. Uh, please help yourself and feel free to keep it as a gift to you from us. Uh, so Deuteronomy 5, 16. Honour your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land your God is giving you. And the second one is in the New Testament. Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 1 to 9. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 9. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honour your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favour when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, do the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people because you know that the Lord will reward each of you for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. And masters, treat your slave in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. Well, hopefully, you know, after about nine weeks of that, we will be able to memorise and know the the Ten Commandments in, in order. But uh, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here at Turing Baptist Church. I'm James. I'm one of the pastors here. And I have the joy of, of opening up God's Word this morning. So please join me as I pray um, as we come to honouring our parents today. Heavenly Father, we want to just give you thanks for just what you've been doing in our lives and that you've made yourself known to us. And as we come now to your Word, Lord, soften our hearts, give us ears to hear. As we come to a passage that for some is easy and for others is tricky. And Father, we realise and want to acknowledge that we live in a world filled with sin, that we haven't all been good parents, we haven't always lived as you've intended us to live. But Father, this morning I pray that as we, we delve into this topic that we'll just get a little bit of a better understanding of why it's there and what it means for our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I suppose the question today I want to ask you is, what do you think of? What image comes to your mind? Or how do you even feel when you hear these words, honour your mother and your father? Now, for some of you here in this room, you'll remember your mum as, as when you were a teenage kid, and she looks over to you and you say, Mum, I don't want to do my homework, it's too busy. And she says, and guess what she does? Well, the fifth commandment is, obey your mother and you shall do this. You've heard it used so that you will complete your HSC and do as your parents intended. Maybe as a parent, you know that when it comes to getting your kids to obey you, you have quoted this scripture not necessarily for the sake of your child, but for the sake of your reputation and your image and just wanting to make sure your kids did exactly what you wanted to do. How do you feel? What, what image do you have? Maybe for you today, as you think about honouring your mother and your father, you think that's a bit old, it's a bit archaic, it's a bit out of date. And really what we need as a society, as a whole, for us to live the contented life, to live the life of fulfilment, that this is sort of out of date. And really we need to actually free ourselves, free ourselves from this restriction, free ourselves from honouring our parents. And then life will be a lot better. I'll be content, I'll be happy. Maybe that's you here in this room today. But maybe for others in this room, as those words of honour your mother and your father come to mind, it's, for some, it's, that's easy. 
But then for possibly many in this room, as you hear those words, honour your mother and your father, it actually brings you great pain, it brings you great distress, and it just brings up a world of hurt because of your parents. Whether it was a father who ran off and left you, or the mother who was not invested in your life, or a parent who abused you terribly. And so when honouring your mother and your father comes, you think, how could I do that? What does that mean? And so today we're going to be looking at honouring your mother and your father. And I ask all of us just to hang in there for a few moments as we think about this and what it means. Because we're doing a, a sermon series called The Ten Commandments. We've been set free to live free for Jesus. Now these are the ten words. Now Deuteronomy doesn't call them commandments. They're called the ten words. And in a way, as we've been noticing over the weeks that have gone past, they're principles. They're principles that play out in life. They're not just 10 that just hold tight, but they sort of shape and inform the principles of life. They're for people that were on the edge of the promised land. They've already been rescued. They've already got a relationship with God. They're not 10 things you must do to become a Christian, but they're things that were written to people that are already in relationship with God. And so what we've seen over three weeks is we've seen that we are to honor God. We are to have no other gods before God. We're not to create a God in our own image. We aren't to misrepresent him. We aren't to use the Lord's name in vain, which isn't really just swearing. It's actually bigger than that. It's, we aren't to misrepresent who he is in our actions and our deeds. A couple of weeks ago, we saw that to honor God is to rest. He created the world in six and he said, have a Sabbath. There's something about celebrating rest. And so the first four, they're very vertical in nature. They're about us and God. But today we're going to hit number five, which is six to go. And in a way, they start to become horizontal. The first four are about loving the Lord your God with all your heart. And we're going to start seeing what it means for our horizontal relationships. Now, as C.S. Lewis comments, which I think is really helpful on this, is we can actually love our parents too much. Now, hear me what I mean. We can go, we need to honour our mother and father, and it becomes an idol in which we love them. But what C.S. Lewis says, which is really helpful, is if we are to have no other God before God, if we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, guess what's going to fall into place well? Loving your parents. And so we come to this, these, we come to number five, which is honour your mother and your father. And it's not a small commandment either. It's actually foundational to loving other people. Foundational to loving other people is actually honouring your parents. Grab your Bibles, look at verse 16 of Deuteronomy chapter 5. As we come to this passage where it says, Honour, honour your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you. Now, honour, it's, it's, it's this Hebrew word that's translated from kabod. It's a word that's used about God and his glory and his presence in the temple. But what does honour mean? Well, it's, it's got this idea of weightiness. It's heavy. Or another way to say that it's weighty and it's heavy is that it has significance. It has reverence. It, it, it's weighty. It's meant to be significant and important. And what we're going to see is that to have ordered love, having ordered love is having honouring love. It's giving weight to position. It's giving significance to their authority and it's giving importance to their position. And here's how, in a way, I think a quick definition of what it means to honour is to lift up with respect, importance and significance. It's to lift up with respect, importance, and significance. That have weight and significance and importance in your life. Now, last week, um, an Australian icon, Olivia Newton-John, passed away. And now, Olivia Newton-John, she's a famous Australian. She's an icon. And to show that she's an icon of Australian culture and her significance and her importance is we're going to have a state funeral for her. When Shane Warne died to represent his weightiness and his significance to Australia and what he brought to cricket, we have a state funeral. And here, it's, 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 it's even bigger. Here, God's saying we are to have honour for our mum and our dad. What's the opposite to honour? Dishonour. What's the opposite to weighty? Unweighty. 
unimportant, in, un, insignificant. And so we had a show on it. It's to lift up with importance, significance, and respect. But who's it for? Like, who's it to? Who's this command to? Now, some of you, you know, some of you might be here today and you've just gone, James, you should have just kept the kids in. They should be here for this sermon. They need to hear it and they need to be told that they need to obey and honour their mum and their dad. And you're like, they should have been sitting in here for this. Some of you are parents of teenage kids. And so last week you thought we were going to do obeying your parents and so you made sure you were here on time and you made every effort to get your teenage kids here last Sunday and sorry you got disappointed because you got Nathan Reed, he came along and preached a cracking sermon and so this week you're like, oh man, I've got to make sure I get back here with my kids, they've got a notebook and I'm going to nudge my teenage kids and tell them you must honour your mum and your dad. Some of you are ready to share with a family member a link to this sermon so that they may do it. Some of you are here ready to tell your kids, here's why you must go to uni and do this career because you need to obey your mum and your dad. But in the context of Deuteronomy chapter 5, who's who's he actually speaking to? The second generation of Israelites have been rescued. They've been in the wilderness for 40 years. They're about to enter this land, this new land, this new country. And he's actually speaking to the majority of parents. Now, there would have been kids there, but he's actually, when he says this, he's actually speaking to grown men and grown women and says, honour your mum and your father. Now, we get to, you know, it's, the primary audience isn't a 10-year-old trying to do their homework or complete their HSC for their parents' security. It's, 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 he's speaking to adults. However, you get to Deuteronomy chapter 6 and he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and, and lay all these commands. Teach your kids these commands. So it's for adults, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds, 70-year-olds, but it's also for kids. Now, in, in, in the New Testament, we get to the New Testament and we see what Jesus does. He, he speaks of honouring your mother and your father. Now, Jesus, he's been confronted by some Pharisees and some religious leaders. And they're sort of having a go at Jesus going, you and your disciples don't follow our traditions. And then Jesus goes, well, that's interesting because what you've done is you followed and made your own traditions where what's happened is, is rather than honouring your mother and your father, what you've done is you've turned and said your devotion and all your money is to go to God. And so there's none left over. Now, in the ancient world, there was no pension. There was no retirement villages. And so in the ancient world, those who looked after their, the elderly were the kids. And so these religious leaders have gone, yes, we are to honour our mother and father, but... They got their money and in devotion to God, they gave all their money to God and said, we've got none left over, sorry, mum and dad. They made excuses, said, oh, we're giving all our money to God, we can't care for our parents. But Jesus, is, he gives us this hint that we are to honour our mother and our father. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, Paul speaks to Timothy about how the church, kids, right, whether they're 30 or 40, you need to care for your mum and your dad. We see this significance. Now, we had that passage read by Elizabeth so well in Ephesians chapter 6. It says, honour your mum and your father. So who's it for? It's for everyone, all ages. No matter what your age is, it's to honour your parents. But at the same time, as we think about saying to children or to 40-year-olds or to 70-year-olds, you need to honour your mum and your dad, We need to ask ourselves as parents, therefore the responsibility is actually on us to ask the question, are we worthy of such honour? And hopefully you are worthy of that honour and respect, that we don't make it hard for our kids to honour and raise up with significance and importance and respect. So who's it for? Well, it's for everyone of every age And it doesn't say when and when not to. So what does it reveal? So we've we've firstly seen who's it to. So we're going to do three things this morning. We're going to see who's it to and we've seen it to everyone. Secondly, we're going to see what it reveals and then we're going to apply it a little bit to our lives. So what does it reveal secondly? Well, it reveals to us (coughs) three things. The value of life. Now, 
as you go through the Ten Commandments, what we are revealed with as we read Deuteronomy, God has rescued these people and he's actually revealing things about himself, his character, how he's ordered and designed the world to flourish. And so the first thing we see is that there's a value of life here. What do I mean by that? Well, have a look at verse 16 again of Deuteronomy. <clears throat> Honour your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you. Have a look at this. So that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Now, we get to Ephesians chapter 6. Did you notice that Paul says this is a commandment with a promise? That your life will go well for you? What does that mean? Well, these people that have been led to a new country, to a better country... They're about to enter the promised land. Now, it's not a promise that you'll live to 85 if you just obey your mum and your dad. I know of Christian young adults who honoured their parents well and yet were killed in a car accident before the age of 20. So he's not saying if you obey your parents, you'll live a long life is in chronological. Now, yes, there is an element that if you don't, you know, you need to stop before you cross the road, right? There is an element that that will go well for you. But see, in a Western mindset, living this side of the cross, our natural inclination is to go to chronological. And so we go, live a long life means like, oh, we're going to live to 95. Woo! Woo! Now, yes, there is an element to that. However, in the ancient world, it's more of the idea of the fullness of life. Not the, not the age, it's the abundance of life. It's the God's blessing, it's the abundant life that God has designed for us. It's a life of contentment. See, it's not that you're necessarily going to live to 85, but your life will be abundant and flourish and you'll have the fullness of life. And isn't that interesting? Because at the heart of the Aussie context, the heart of our country, is that we want to be people who find meaning and purpose and the fullness of life. Every day we're going around trying to be content. We're trying to find another way of freeing ourselves so that we can have the fullness of life. You know, sometimes we may think, well, if I could just free myself from my parents and get out of home, then I will live a full life. Free ourselves from the confines of marriage or free ourselves from our teachers. Free ourselves from all governing authorities in the name of love. And it will only be then that we can start to experience the fullness and the abundance of life. We're searching, aren't we? A culture we're searching for contentment, happiness and the, and the abundance of life. And how beautiful it is in this text that's thousands of years old. God in his grace, he actually gives us a hint and he reveals to us what we need to learn about honour our parents. And as we honour our parents, there's something in that that then leads to a life filled with fullness. See, the context is they're, they're on the edge of the promised land. These are people who have been rescued out of Pharaoh, from Pharaoh's slavery. They've been rescued from oppression. And God says, you're now my people, and they're about to go into a country that is going to be their country. Now, for us, we aren't the governing authorities of this country, but Israel are going to be their own nation. And so, they, so God's saying, hey, at the heart of it, you need to have kids who honour no matter what age they are, we need to learn how to honour our mother and our father. Because if you enter in and there isn't that, there'll be anarchy. There's something foundational to honouring your parents. It's understanding how the world works. It's how God has designed it in his good manner. And I wonder, have, have you actually seen that? As you've experienced life I've seen it, that those who honour their mum and their dad at a young age, now it's not always the case, right? Don't quote this, but it's not always the case. But as I've watched and experienced life, and maybe you who are older than me have seen it, that generally those who have an honour and respect of holding people up with respect, significance and importance, generally life in some form goes a little bit better. They seem to have a bit more of a, a full life. Things seem to work better. They seem to work better in their jobs. They seem to respect authority in a different way. And therefore, there's actually no surprise that study after study after study, and no matter where we think we are in this room politically or whether we're left or whether we're right or however we view marriage or however we view individuals, what we see after study after study after study is 
that what happens in the home strongly influences what happens later on in life. Whether they finish school, whether they end up in jail, whether they have, a, whether they have stable relationships, whether they can hold a job down. Now, it's not always the case, is it? Statistically, but statistically, it's, it's higher, right? It's going to be, go well from it. Now, it's not always the predictor that if a child grows up in a family the way they honour their mum and dad and where the parents teach that, that it's going to go well from it. It doesn't always happen, but the best predictor for it is having a stable home life. The studies show us that they have a mum and a dad at home who loves their kids, who raises their kids, and to have kids who learn how to honour and love their parents. The statistics in the studies show us that in some form they will flourish in life. And so it's no surprising that as we come to this nation about to enter this new country, that we see that God in his mercy and his grace, he shows us God's good design. He shows us that there's a stringent value of valuing the value of life. But also there's the value of gender. And did you notice it's not honour your dad or just honour your mum? No, it's actually honour both of them. Honour both your mum and your dad with the same value. Now, in the ancient Near East, when this was written, this would have been a little bit confronting and a bit unusual to have women and mothers mentioned in texts. And here we see that it's not just honour your dad, it's actually honour your mum and your dad. Don't just listen to one or pin one up against the other or have a different of significance for one to the other. It's God reveals to us, no, value both of them. Value both your mom and your dad. There's a value of gender here. Now, you can imagine 3.30 on a, on a Wednesday afternoon and, and there's four kids running around the house and it's mums at home and it's going chaotic. The kids, it's feral hour and the kids are just not listening. And then you've got dad who's at home and he's got the kids and it's feral hour. He's trying to get the washing done. He's just pulling his hair out. The kids aren't listening. And so mum, mum says to the kids, kids, you're not listening. When your dad gets home, you're going to have it. And then dad, who's at home, flustered and carry on. He's like, wait till your mum gets home and she'll talk to you about this. Now, I think sometimes we do that just as a cop out so we don't have to have the responsibility of it. But have you realised, mums and dads, in that moment where we do that, we've actually undermined your own authority? We've actually just showed and modelled to our kids that actually that one's more important and therefore you need to, it's like, dad can't, like, I get why we did it, hey. But actually we're to teach kids of all ages to honour both mum and dad. Now, they both have pivotal parts in your life. Have you ever realised that? Like biology tells me. The birds and the bees tell me, all of us need a mom and a dad for you to be here. We all need it. Neither trumps the other. They both have intringent value to us. Now, we do see throughout the Bible, there's this idea of, of the father is the spiritual head, but in no way does that overturn the value of both. They both have significant value that we're not to trump one against the other. But also, we are to it also teaches us the value of position. So what does it reveal? Well, it reveals to us the value of life. It reveals to us the value of gender. But it actually reveals to us the value of position. See, honour, honour and respect, this weightiness, it's not always based on their personal qualities. Right? Your dad might have good looks. Your mum may cook an amazing curry. Your dad may have incredible ironing skills. But that's not why you honour them because they've been given to you by God. God has given them that position. And it's the same with all of life. That all of life, people have been given positions of authority and we are to honour that. Whether it's parents, whether it's leaders, whether it's governing authorities, they've all been given by God. Because see, at the heart of honouring your mum and your dad is actually at the heart of a life school that we all need to learn. Because Honouring your parents is at the foundation. It is the foundation to honouring all authority in society. And ultimately, it helps you to honour God himself. Do you see how this command, it's not just for the family, but what it does is it actually shows us the need for all of creation, for all of us to honour position. I, I imagine some of you may have worked with someone 
who whinged about authority. You know, that one person who's just like, the boss asked me to sweep the floor. No way. You know, you're an apprentice and they say, hey, could you empty the bins? And they just whinge. And the boss asks them to do something that's slightly different. It's a little bit outside their role description. And they just whinge and whinge. And they talk to you all the time. They, they, they belittle the boss. They just pull them down. They just don't like authority in any form. And you watch them. And, and, and what do you see? You see someone who's just really miserable. And in all of life, they struggle to honor anyone in position. And they're just upset with life. But then you watch the person who who empties the bin, sweeps the floor, and is willing to do that little job that the boss has asked. It's outside their role description. And you watch them, and they seem to be more content. There's something foundational to honouring your parents that plays out in the life of you in the workplace and at school and in the church. You know, you might be here today, and you're thinking to yourself, you're wrestling with this idea that we just need to free ourselves from all authority. Maybe you're wrestling with the idea, maybe if we just got rid of governing authorities, maybe if we just got rid of anything and we just had an egalitarian flat society where there is no position. I think that's actually really impossible, isn't it? Because we, we, there always is everywhere, isn't it? There's a mum and a dad, there's a school teacher and a pupil, there's always the police and the citizens, there's always the governor, or, or there's always the, the government and the people. Like, there's just all in life, there is this sense that there always is positions, there's always authority, there's always structures. And we see God's a God of order and, and he, he has structures in our lives. And we see, that, we see that God was structured. He gives us rest. It's okay to rest. We see that there's structures in life that see to honor your mum and your dad is a life skill that flows out into the rest of life. Now, if you were to go and read Deuteronomy 17 and 18, what you see is that these principles start to be played out in what they look like in the, Deuter in, in the Israelite community. In Deuteronomy 17 and 18, we see the mention of kings. We see the mention of prophets. We see the mention of priests. Now, if you can't honor your mum and your dad, how are you going to honor the priest, the king, and the prophet that are all there by God? See, it, it's, it's a life skill. See, the family network affects all of life. Because how you honor your parents is going to affect how you honour your future wife or your future husband. It will affect the way you honour your boss or the government of Australia. It will affect the way you honour the leaders of the church. And so in, it's no coincidence that it's number five. It's like the first one out of the next five. That the honour is such a crucial part of that. But did you notice that it's, have you ever noticed that it's a crucial part of the New Testament as well? This side of Jesus, we're this side of Jesus. And we see that it's foundational in Romans chapter 13, honour by paying your taxes. Paul's in chains when he writes 1 Timothy and he says to slaves, honour your masters. In 1 Peter, husbands, you're to honour your wives. In 2 Peter, you're to honour your national leaders. And even Jesus himself, when, the, when these leaders wanted to trap him and say, you think you're the king, well, where does this denarius go? Well, what does Jesus do? He says, he, the, the king of the universe, the God of the universe, he says, give to Caesar's what is Caesar's. Honouring your parents is foundational. It's the foundational basis for all honour in society and ultimately in God himself. And so we see the value of position. What does it reveal? It reveals the value of life, the value of gender, and the value of position. But sadly, the case is in many places is that authority can be abused. It can be misused. And there's going to be people in this room who are hurting because of that. And so I'm just going to spend a few moments. I want to talk to two groups of people. I want to talk to those who are hurting because of abuse or a parent who's let them down. But at the same time, I want to speak to another group. I want to speak to those of you who are parents here who actually go, you know what? I have failed and I feel shame about it. And so firstly, I want to speak to those of you who are hurting terribly because your mum may have walked out when you were 10 years old. Your dad may have committed adultery. You may have been abused by one of your parents. And for some of you in this room, that pain goes really, really, really deep. And it just hurts when you even have to think about honouring your mum or your dad. It triggers things. It brings terrible images. And so I just want to just, just touch a little bit on this for a moment for you. 
and just share a few things about what honour isn't. Honour doesn't call us, it doesn't call you to overlook sin. Honour doesn't call you to deny what happened. And honour also does not ask us to cover it up and put it under the blankets and act as if it never happened. Honour does not ask us to do that. Honour doesn't always involve obedience. When God forbids something, we don't do it. Honour doesn't mean that you put yourself or your kids in an unsafe situation. And so what do we do? How do you work through this if, you've, if you're in a position today where it really, really hurts and there's some terrible, terrible, horrific stuff and I'm sorry that that's happened to you? Well, here's some things, ways maybe to walk forward. We honour their position somehow. We honour their position because they are still your mum and your dad. Now, if respecting your mum or your dad through relationship is impossible, or even if it's unwise, we can still honour their position. I want to distinguish between position and the person. There's a difference between the person and the position. The position is they are still your parents. And so we need to somehow work out how can we walk forward by honouring their position, but not honouring what they did. And it's a hard work forward. And I, and I got this off one pass, and I don't know how whether this helps much, but he sort of uses the army, you know, salute the rank, not the man. You know, in the TV series Band of Brothers, there's this, this, this scene at the end of the movie where the Easy Company 101 Airborne Battalion, the, the war's over, and a Major Winter, Winters, is, he walks past uh, Lieutenant Sobel. Now, originally, Lieutenant Sobel was above Major Winters at one point in the, in the TV show, but Lieutenant Sobel does not acknowledge Major Winters as he walks past. And so Major Winters pulls him up and he says, Captain Sobel, we salute the rank and not the man. We, we honour the position. And so today, I, I don't know what you've been through or what, what you're facing or the pain and the trauma that that brings, but we, we, we can honour the position but not the person. Ask God to help, to grow you, to do it. Don't talk about it with other people in a way that you... you belittle and pull your parents down because in a way I think your parents already feel shame probably for what they've done maybe and then there's that walk of what does that look like when it's really really tricky what does it look like to have safe boundaries in a way that you honor their position not what they've done and sometimes it's working through what forgiveness looks like and when to forgive and when to do those things. And, and maybe you're here today and you, you need help with that or you, you're confused by it and I haven't done enough to talk about it. I, I encourage you, just come and chat with me afterwards. I'd love to chat with you and talk with you. But what about those of you, the second group, who are here today as parents who go, you know what, yeah, I know I have majorly stuffed up as a mum or a dad and I feel tremendous shame for the things that I've done. Well, if you're in Christ, if you're a Christian today and you realise that and you haven't said sorry, go and say sorry. But also remember that in Colossians that you are a new creation in Christ. God sees you as Jesus. You're a new creation. You're a new being. He's renewing you. And so you've been forgiven. You're, 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 there's now no condemnation. You're in Jesus. And so reflect on your new identity in Jesus in those moments of great pain and shame. But maybe you're here today and you know you're not a Christian, you're not a follower of Jesus and you know there's deep shame, there's deep pain from things that you have done and you just don't know what to do with it. Well, that's the good news of Jesus today. The good news of Jesus is that through his life, death and resurrection, you can come to him and you can lay your guilt, your shame and all that you've done and you can lay that on Jesus and God will see you as he sees Jesus. That his righteousness, his standing, God will lay on you. And so as Jesus says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. And so if that's you this morning, come and find rest in Jesus where you can be forgiven 
freed and have a slate that's been wiped clean. See, the good news of Jesus is that you don't do anything. It's, it's not that you have to come and you have to better stuff, you have to do all these things. No, it's he's done it all. But then also for us to be reminded though, whether you're parents or the kids, there are serious consequences to things that happen that affect life for the long term. It can't always just be fixed overnight. There are serious consequences that we have to live with because of some of the things that we have done. Okay, but, but, but imagine that for all of us in this room. Imagine how much easier it is to obey and respect a parent or a person whom you respect and has earned your worth. You know, one who doesn't make unreasonable demands, who doesn't raise their voice too quickly and who sacrificially serves the family. Imagine that. Or dads for a moment. Are you demanding that your kids honour you? Are you the person that yells at them and says, you must honour me, or are you worthy of it? See, the father who yells at a five-year-old and says, you must do this and never show them what to do, what do they do? You know, it's like teaching a four-year-old who's never swum, and you yell at them, you must swim. See, Ephesians reminds us as parents, don't, uh, 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 you know, make your kids angry. But the opposite to that is actually we need to nurture them and praise them. See, as parents, whether you're a dad, whether you're a mum, whether you're a grandparent, I want to ask the question, are you someone who's actually modelling to the next generation what it means to honour authority? See, the moment that you ask your kids to say, you must honour me, and you go out and you dig on the government and you belittle them, you've just modelled to them what it means not to honour. Do you see what I mean? Like, like as parents and grandparents, we need to make sure that we're modelling to them how we honour government, how we honour church leaders, how we honour in all streams of life. Because it's, a, it's, it's sort of contradictory, isn't it, when you say, hey, honour me, and yet you don't honour in society. It's a beautiful thing to see you say sorry to your kids. It's a beautiful thing to nurture and praise them and equip them to do this, not just yell at them and say, hey, you must. But we must sacrificially serve the younger as the younger honour the older. See, Ultimately, as parents or grandparents in this room, what your kids need most is Jesus. They need you to love Jesus most of all. That's how we, and it's one way that we can show them how we honour. Okay, so we've seen what, what, who is it for? We've seen what does it reveal? And finally and quickly, I want to show what does that mean then for us? What do we, how do we live this out with family, right? Because Surely it's different for a 14-year-old and a 5-year-old what it means to obey. And surely it's different for a 60-year-old, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to suggest three things. Three different stages of life. Now, I haven't come up with these, right? I'm not that smart. But I think these are really, really helpful things, okay? Three ways. Honour by obeying, honour by sharing, and honour by supporting. We'll look at honour by obeying. I think the best way to put it in, you just go 0 to 18, 0 to 20. The way that you honour your parents is that you obey your parents. Empty the dishwasher, you empty the dishwasher. If you're a teenage child and they say, hey, could you please come to church? You come to church with your parents. It's, it's the idea of obeying. Now, it's going to look different for a 14-year-old to a 5-year-old, of course. But for those of that age, it's, it's obey, submit to your parents. Do what they ask you to do. Do those kind of things. As a teenager, you're going to think that you know more than your parents. They don't understand you and they're just dumb. Now, we all think that. Now, the funny thing is, though, have you realised that your parents were a teenager at some point and they thought their parents were dumb? But Mark Twain, have a listen to what Mark Twain says. When I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant, I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I, when he got, to be, when I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much the old man had learned in seven years. See, there's something about, the, the, you know, and, and as teenagers, it is going to be difficult. Like, oh, it is difficult to sit down and go, why do they want this? But one of the ways you can honour their position is to obey them and trust them. But also, one way of obeying them is show gratitude. How can you show honour to your parents as a 14 or a 5-year-old? You say, thank you. Thank you for taking me to sport five days a week. Thank you for buying me a slushie. You know, when my kids say, hey, Dad, th like, it doesn't happen. You know, when they, thank you for that slushie, it's actually like, oh, that's nice. So, so say thank you to your parents for what they do. So honour by obeying. It's, it's just, 
so, so zero to say 18, or in a way, I'm going to, you know, till you leave home, or you're, you want to be careful with that because you might be 30 and you're still at home, that's different. But maybe when you're financially independent, it changes. You just got to, you got to wrestle with this stuff, right? So honour by obeying, zero to 18. <clears throat> but then after that, honour by sharing, it changes. It changes drastically. Once they leave home or once they get married or, or once they become financially in, independent, it does change how this plays out. Honour by sharing with your parents. You know, sometimes as parents, you know, your child gets married and you still expect the same, but actually the Bible's pretty clear. Once they leave home and they, they marry, like they're very cut. But you still honour. How do you hold weight, significance and importance with your parents? Share with your parents. Tell them what you're enjoying. Tell them what you're not enjoying. Share with them photos. If you've got kids, show them photos and playing sport or invite your parents to come and hang out with you. Share life. Share the ups. Share the downs. So, so how can you honour your parents' position in life? Share your life with them. Tell them what's going on. Now, if they're overseas and they're in a different town, it's going to look differently. But hey, we've got FaceTime. We've got Skype. We've got so many ways now. So share with your parents. Some of us probably just need to hear that. Bring up mum today and say, hey, love your mum. Thankful for you. They just love that stuff. Okay, but also finally, honour by supporting. That's that next category. It might be 40, it might be 50, it might be when you're 60. Well, what I mean here is we, we honour by supporting. You know, your parents fed you. They changed your nappy. They did lots of stuff for you. And there comes a time when it reverses around the other way, where they need support. But also remember that your parents have done way more for you than you'll have ever done for you. You've done for them. And so one of the ways that we can honour our parents is by supporting them as they get older, taking them to doctor's appointments, caring for them, looking after them. And, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. See, in culture, it's a little bit in Aussie culture, it's a little bit of like parents are an inconvenience. But God says, no, they're there for you to love and to care for. It may mean you need to feed them. It may mean you need to change them. It may mean you mow the lawn. It may mean you go shopping and there's, a, there's appointments. So there's a beautiful thing about honouring your parents by supporting them as they get older and they need your help. Now, I, I just want to talk about this just for one moment. Because culturally, I think there's two ways we'll view it in the room here. Possibly. Is some of you will be too quick to put your parents in nursing homes. Now, we live in Australia. We have the beauty of retirement villages and all that kind of stuff. But for some of us, it might be that we're just a little bit too quick to just go, there you go, rather than actually support them. But then on the other end, there could be some of you in this room who feel like you've always got to care for your parents for 24-7. And there's this idea of shame if you can't care for your parents, right? And so you never put them into a, 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 an aged care facility. Now, I want to speak to both of you. Those who put them in too quick, slow down. Like, learn how you can learn stuff through supporting them. Our culture is quick with it, but maybe there's an opportunity for you to support them before they go there. Now, for those who may feel shame of that, there's no way I could ever put them into a nursing home. The reality is we're living in Australia. Culture is different. And over, from 100 years ago, we are living a lot longer. And so some of the things that we have to do now with people that get older is things that we didn't do 100 years ago. And so at some point there will come a time where you're caring for your mum and your dad where it actually is way too much for you to cope with changing their nappies or to feed. It actually may come to a point in an Australian context where you actually can't physically and it's not good for you to keep doing it. And can I encourage you that as a Christian, it is okay to put your parents in a facility where they will be loved and cared for 24-7. And if you feel shame by doing that, remember the good news of Jesus, that your identity isn't tied up in the culture that says you have to do this, but your identity is tied up in Jesus now. And so it is okay. Okay. So this morning we've seen who's it for. We've seen that it's, it's for everyone. We've seen what it reveals. It's revealed some incredible things, the value of life, gender, position. We've seen how we, uh, we can, the ways we can live it out by, you know, obeying, sharing and supporting. But how do we do it? How do we be encouraged to do it? Well, I think ultimately it's look to Jesus, isn't it? Jesus, the perfect son of God, 
honoured his father. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, your will be done, as it is on heaven, as it is on earth. We see the teenager of 12 years old, Jesus, the perfect son with flawed parents, and he's teaching in the temple, and he's teaching this stuff, the son of God, the God, the creator of the universe, and his parents rock up to him and say, hey, Jesus, we need to go home. And what does Jesus do? He says, yes, dad, and yes, mum, I'll go with you. He obeys them. During his earthly ministry, when he was 30, around 30, as he's doing ministry, what does he do? He shares his life with his family. He has them over for meals. He has meals with them. He shares his life. And then as Jesus is up on the cross, as he is being crucified, as he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As he is dying for the sins of the world, as he is dying for you and me, as he sacrifices his life for you and for me, Jesus is up there and he looks out and he says to the disciples, that's my mother. Can you take care of her? Let's pray. Father, help us to know what it is to honour, to lift up. Father, may we be a church that loves to show respect, significance and importance in all we do and say. Amen.